Greetings and welcome to another edition to the Tower Dive. I'm your host, Dota. Join me today is Boslo, support player for Nine Nips, Big Play Jodeway, uh, Captain for OC Nation, Phoenix, mid laner for Conquer Academy, Aleslo, ADC for All One Lane, and finally, up and coming real estate manager, Rakan. So, first off, uh, we're going to talk about skill cap. Skill cap right now, five and three after an 0-2 start. Is this a good team that got off to a bad start? A bad team that's just gotten lucky the last couple of weeks, or a mediocre team that people are underestimating. So we're gonna go uh, with you, big play, uh, Jodeway. Uh, well, I think uh, Skill Cap's a really good team that's being underestimated right now. Uh, they've played some really good competition, being in Group B, and they've beaten Conqueror, which is one of the top teams in my opinion. Uh, that's all I got. Okay, okay. Aleslo, please. Um, <clears throat> they're the best team in Group B. Um, even though they lost, you know, they lost to Naughty Nips in 15 minutes. They lost to EG in the first week. Um, they beat Conquer. They beat Frosty when I was on them, on the team. Uh, they are the only team right now that is on a five-game win streak in, <clears throat> in Group B. And it's not like they played all crap teams. So, if it comes down to it, I think that they'll actually have the best record in Group B at the end of the season if they keep this up. Okay. All right. Yeah. Phoenix. Um, I think Skill Cap um, definitely was, in the beginning, like looking to be like a meme team of some sorts, I guess you can say. But uh, now, after they've uh, picked up their play, they their bot lane is actually pretty ridiculous. Um, when I played against their bot lane, like, I was actually, like, genuinely scared of their bot lane. Like, I wasn't scared of any of their bot lane duo, like, roaming down there, but their bot lane, I was scared to do anything. Um, so I give props to them. Um, I think now they're definitely one of the more top four teams. Like, I definitely think they can make playoffs, but, um, cross-conference play and the last few weeks of the season are going to be a huge, um, determine, determine determine I don't know if they uh actually make it to the playoffs or not but they're definitely one of like the higher mid-tier teams in my opinion okay yeah yeah, yeah. uh Rakan please I think it's a mix of all three I think that the teams that they have played against while they absolutely for the most part they've absolutely smashed some of which is teams underestimating some of which is that they just stepped up and played but then in the games they lost, they just looked like they didn't exist. Like the Naughty Nips game, 15 and a half minutes, the fastest game in duo history. They got absolutely destroyed. But then they come back, not even five hours later, to do the same thing to another team, but in a lot slower of a fashion. I think that these guys are actually pretty middle of the pack. I would put them top three overall, and probably one or two in Group B. So I think it's kind of a mix of all three, but I would suggest from the here on out, don't underestimate these guys because they can show up to play. Okay, okay. Uh, Vaslo, please. I think they're um, a pretty good team. I think Buggy is, like, really the hard carry of that team. His support play has been absolutely nutty. His top lane play even then was uh, pretty good. And um, I think that they're really, really good. And um, their team play is exceptional. I think their top laner is uh, probably their weakest uh, position. Also, their mid lane I don't think is that good as well. Uh, but I think they're very good at playing around um, playing around each other and objectives and uh, what the jungler does with the uh, the bot lane support and their vision control is pretty fantastic and helps them uh, put them into a much stronger position than I think that normally if people just bashed heads together, would be a, they would lose. Okay, okay. Well, so my thoughts on the matter. Um, yeah, I'm kind of, I definitely think, that skill cap's a good team uh top three overall in both divisions i don't know i feel like that's a little overestimating them um just because i mean the teams they beat were aether not a good team let's be honest uh they beat frosty way back um they beat conquer which definitely was an upset in my book upset in my book they beat lobster gang which honestly i thought was kind of 50 50 uh and then they got the ff against Eskimos, but let's be honest, that was probably going to be a win. Either way, uh, the teams they lost to were Nine Nips, um, EG, and Primate. So, honestly, I feel like they're top three team in their division. 
I definitely see them as playoff contenders. I definitely see them right now as a solid third in the uh, Baron division. I just, I don't know. They haven't fully convinced me that they can take on like AOL. They can take on Ninips, Flight, uh, GVG Upgrade, or um, if they played Conqueror again. I just feel like that game, Conqueror just honestly had a little bit of a bad game, maybe a little bit of underestimating them, then a couple just bad little shot calls, rotations, et cetera, et cetera. I think Conqueror is better than them still. I have to give my props to my boys. They just kind of got a little unlucky there. But top three in their division for sure. But enough about skill cap. Let's go on to our next one. So I believe Baron is the stronger of the two divisions. Last week's panel, which unfortunately did not get up, loaded due to technical reasons but the panel last week confirmed my thoughts so does everyone else here think that's the case if not please let me know your thoughts uh just fyi baron won nine games last week in conference call or cross conference play and elder won five only so we'll start from the bottom uh Vasilu, please i was in the last one and i would I still agree. I think Baron is still the stronger of the two divisions. I imagine it to continue being the case at this point in time. Um, a lot of the teams in uh, the Baron division seem to have a lot more idea of how to play the macro um, into the mid and late game comparatively. And then um, I think a lot of the teams in the Baron division have a better early game, which usually helps to carry the ones that um, stagnate in the later games. Okay. Okay. Uh, Rakan, please. Yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and agree with that. I think Baron just has overall more of the macro-micro sense of play. They can manipulate the map a little bit better, but that's not to say that there are not teams in Elder Dragon that can not square up to that kind of level of play. For instance, AOL, they're top of the league right now. Those guys can play the macro and micro pretty much as best as anybody can right now, but outside of AOL, there's really not that many teams that would jump to mind per se for macro micro so i think baron overall is a stronger group as a whole but aol is just running this tournament over by themselves yeah definitely so far that has been the case phoenix um yeah i agree uh just playing in uh baron by myself uh i can definitely tell um that the skill level in uh the baron group alone is significantly higher than um that of our counterparts in Elder. Uh, I think the only two teams in the Elder division that are actually worth taking note of as far as their play style and how they play as a uh, group of five are AOL and OC Nation, who are at the top and just running their conference over. Um, I think that um, if there were maybe more teams that understood how to play the gaming group A, that the skill floor between the two would be significantly more even. But in this case, I think group B is just better by a long shot. Okay. Um, the top ADC Frosty you'll ever have. Aleslo, please. Um, <laughs> um, I can agree with Phoenix and Rakan. The group B overall is, I wouldn't say much better because when you look at it, I'd say, number one, um, in both divisions, if we put them head-to-head, -head, I'd say that AOL is better than uh, Conquer. I believe that's still number one. Um, and then number two, OC Nation and Naughty Nips. That's kind of close. I would kind of give the edge to Naughty Nips, but then from there, you know, you have Skullcap and then EG, and then the rest are just the bottom of the pack. So overall, yeah, Group B is better, but I would 100% take... Um, the top of Group A over Group B. So you think Elder's the better division? No, I think overall, B, the Baron is better, but the AOL, I feel like, is just running it over. And oh, okay. now now with the addition of, you know, me, <clears throat> not to toot my horn or anything, but uh, it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun with cross-conference, being able to play my old uh, division and get some rematches. Okay, okay. So basically, AOL, bunch of Baron division, and then Elder is basically how you view the standings. Mm, All right, next. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I got what you're saying. Okay, Mr. Uh, Jodeway, please. Uh, I definitely think Baron's better overall. I think uh, their teams, two through six, all are com could be uh, competitors for the second playoff spot. I definitely think Conquer's top of the division of their 
Yeah. Uh, but I think uh, Group A is definitely more top heavy with us and AOL. I don't really see uh, another team that's really contending for the playoffs like I do in Group B, having uh, six contenders for the two playoff spots. Uh, yeah. Wait, that's okay. Okay. So you think Elder? Okay, so you think Baron or Elder is the stronger overall? I think Baron is stronger overall because they have six teams who potentially could contend for the playoff spots. But I think uh, Group A has two of the top three teams. Okay, so you think Elder? So you think if we put the two divisions combined, Elder would be, or the top three teams would be like what? Uh, well, OC Nation and. Conquer would be the top three, yeah. Not okay. in any specific specific order. Okay, okay. So you're kind of with the less low. Top yeah. one, two teams from Elder are better, but then Baron's got the, I guess, the middle of the pack more so. Uh, I, yeah. But okay. I think I think Conquer is definitely set in stone, number one. Uh, the two through six teams are better than most of Elder, I'd say. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, no. Um. All right, so my thoughts on the matter. Um, definitely have to go with, I think Barons is stronger. I think AOL, honestly, not an, didn't impress me at all last week. I thought it was going to be a pretty good game. Um, it was not a pretty good game, unless you're an AOL fan. Um, so definitely, I would have to say AOL are just looking really dominant right now. I think, obviously kind of getting a little topic, but I think if they can pick up a solid bot lane, Naughty Nips can do well in the cross-conference play. So if – I think that's just the big thing right now. Is it looks like both divisions are kind of lacking in the bot lane. I feel like we have really good mid laners, junglers, top laners. It's just like bot laners in general, ADC and support duos, either one is good and the other not so much, or they're just you no know, synergy. I don't know. A lot of things coming into play here, but I, I kind of agree. I think it's AOL definitely. OC Nation – I don't know. You guys are killing me. Like, sometimes I think you guys are, like, top two, three if we combine the divisions. And other times I'm like, eh, maybe, like, four. I don't know. But I, I still concur. I think Baron overall, um, if we're going to compare who wins at the end of cross conference, I'm going to have to give it to Baron. Can I make one comment, though? Sure. You You just said there was no real bot lanes. But this doesn't have to do with me at all. But I just feel like Hayes, the support for Frosty, he was my choice for the most underrated player. If me and him were to stick together through the entire season, I think you would definitely have a a contender for the best bot lane compared to Skill Cap, who I think probably has one of the best bot laner um bot lane duos as well. But if me and Hayes were together as well as um the Skill Cap, I think that'd be a great competition for the best bot lane. And that's not even me too to my own horn. I think Hayes is the most underrated support. He's probably the best support in the league. Yeah, can I say something too? Of course. Uh, yeah, I well, I think the meta is also kind of screwed with the bot lane because it's hard for a gold tier player to switch their whole play style around champions that are strong. Um, but I do think that our bot lane is a, a bit underrated for what they do because we don't we ask a lot from them not to die in lane to scale up with uh. Killjoy playing scaling mages, but I think the meta is kind of hurting the bot lane in a sort. Not really. It's actually making the bot lane more diverse than it's ever been. Other than gold funneling, I think the meta's fine where it is. The game is at one of its peaks of player interest. You know, you've got like the likes of Irelia, Yasuo, Vladimir, Aatrox is starting to see Pro Play again. He's playing play the bot lane still. Like, there's so many things that people don't recognize. It's like, most of the ADCs in the league don't want to learn the new thing. They don't want to play Vladimir. They don't want to play, you know, they don't want to play, um, excuse me, um, uh, Camille, Brand, stuff like that. They don't want to play that stuff. They want to stick to their, oh, well, I've been playing Tristana since Season 1, so I'm not going to switch it up. You have to. You have to switch to the meta. If you want to succeed as a team, you have to learn to play new stuff. That's my two cents on the matter. Yeah, yeah, I un I concur with that a little bit at like the highest level, but at the same time, Kaiza, Lucian have been really good. 
Ezreal is still in a decent spot right now. Definitely not garbage tier. Um, so those are three very viable ADCs people can still play. And you can still play other ADCs. They're not very good right now. But at the same time, we are a Bronze Silver Gold League. And a lot of times I feel like even if a champion's weak, if you can play that champion very well, you make up for a lot of shortfalls that come from the Riot nerf hammer, so to speak. Um, but just those three ADCs in general, I think, are very strong. So, And that's kind of my thing. I do agree the bot lane meta is, I mean, it's killing me. I'm an ADC main. Um, but at the same time, I feel like with those three ADC choices, you can kind of make it work. But my two cents. So let's go on to the next one. Uh, based on last week, again, conference cross conference play. Uh, which team did you think was kind of a letdown? You know, you expected a lot, didn't get too much in return. And what team impressed you? Uh, we'll start at the top again. Go, Mr. Mr. Big Play. Uh, besides the roasted uh, Black Pepper situation. <laughs> yes. Uh, that was definitely disappointing because they're, I thought, one of the teams that would be contending for the second spot in our league, but uh, our conference. But I'd say uh, us, OC, because uh, we really had a poor pick ban against uh, Havoc, and we kind of went into that match thinking it'd be an easy game. But uh, we definitely underestimated them, and they're a decent team that should have been uh, treated like they were better competition. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, Leslo? Yeah, I kind of have to agree with him. And just to, like, f go further into that Havoc situation, I think they're the uh, middle-of-the-season version of Skullcap. You, they do have some very, like, skilled players that can carry games, but people just think of them, you know, oh, they're just the replacement team. You know, they were put together so fast. But you look at a lot of the teams in the league right now, most of them were put together right at the end of um, preseason and stuff like that, right before the season started. So... They're definitely not a team to forget about. I'm not saying, you know, they're going to make playoffs. I'm not going to say they're better than Naughty, better than Conqueror, better than, you know, EG or Skillcap. But they definitely can win some games. They definitely can pull out some carries. But they're just definitely not a team to underestimate. Okay. Okay. Phoenix. Um, Most impressed team that impressed me the most? I'd have to say... I'd have to give it to Naughty Nips, to be honest. Uh, Playing one of the best teams in the league if not the best team in the entire league and holding them to a 38 minute game and only and losing but the game was close for almost the entire time uh i give them big credit um and then for most disappointing performance i guess you could say um i don't know if you want it just for this week but i'm gonna go in general is uh kiss gaming um I don't know what I don't know if it's like behind the scenes or I don't know if it's just like the players not playing enough together or just don't have enough knowledge of the game. But like I feel like Kiss is just they have solo talent, but as five, I just feel like they have nothing. Like they're just five players that were just like thrown together like a free agent team and was like, okay, have fun. Um, but yeah, th that's who I think was most impressive and most depressing to watch. Okay, okay, Rakan. I'm actually going to have to go on the opposite end of the spectrum of that and say Naughty Nips. I know uh, the majority of the people on the team would not agree, but I think that everybody played about as poorly as they possibly could have. And there's a couple different things. You know, I myself wasn't feeling terribly too on last week. I don't think Voss was either. You know, I don't know what happened to GVG and Blight. And Akarcyon did okay. I mean, we all played mediocre at best. We could have done a lot better and taken the game off of AOL and on the opposite end of the spectrum, I think that the team is most impressed to me this week was skill cap. Those guys went from not, not even just this week. They they've just impressed me. They went from losing in 15 and a half minutes to Nani Nips to coming back, going five games in a row and without a loss. I mean, that's, that's impressive no matter who you are or what division you're at. You could be bronze. You could be challenger. You can't, hey, that's really, it's really rough. Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, Voslo. I was going to agree with him about the nodding up situation, but because he said that, I'll choose a different team that I also felt that I um, wasn't doing as well as I would like. Um, and I'm going to give that to... Ooh, let's go with... Naughty Nips, anyway. <laughs> I'm going to go with Kiss. I, I really like um, what Kiss brings to the table early game. I think their jungler might be one of the better junglers in the league. Um, I just feel like that all the lanes are, fl are um, floundering, and there's no real... 
um, carrier playmaking potential on that team, and that is their biggest issue that I see, and it's really sad to see. And I think the team that I've um, really uh, was surprised about was Havoc, just pretty much just coming out of nowhere, just getting uh, these five players. Uh, two people, I think, are off roll in that team, and they were able to do quite well with I play support and Yeso as an AD carry instead of a support. There's like three support mates on that team and able to do pretty nice things despite. And I thought that that was pretty impressive for what we saw. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, team that let me down, nine ups. Definitely stinking it up last week. Um, but honestly, no, I, I honestly thought um, nine ups would win. So, I guess that's just a bit disappointing to me. Um, just bad rotations, just not very good overall, but not really good. Ganking from Blight, kind of mediocre on that. Um, I mean, I guess I'm just going off. Obviously, I'm not really going off this season so much the performance, but last season, I mean, GVG was the best top laner in the league. I, I don't think many people would argue that. Blight was the best jungler in the league. So you put those two together, and it's like, wow, that's really, really good. Arcarcion, solid mid laner. Okay. And then bot lane. Um, obviously, Rakan Boslo haven't really been tested too much in the bot lane, but still, it's like, you guys got a, a top-notch mid laner, the best jungler and top laner from last season. Like, as long as bot lane doesn't go 0 and 12, it should be a win. And it, it wasn't. Like, I would have to say GVG, Blight didn't do very well. I think a Carshield still did well, but playing GVG just kind of looked mediocre, honestly, which I didn't expect at all. But again, best of one could have just been an off game, off week, bad, maybe unlucky picks. They didn't expect the, those picks to come out of AOL, a lot, hundred reasons why, just the best one, not that big a deal, nine ups can bounce back. Now, team that impressed me, I have to go with ESG Genesis. Um, they went one and one, uh, but they lost to Conquer in 33 minutes. I mean, they got a Baron, they got Rift, they got a couple towers, so honestly, I think that's a solid performance from them, especially because ESG's been having some roster issues, which again, if you were here last season, you know that's a common theme. And then they played Aether. Now, Aether game did not look good in the beginning, but ESG didn't give up. They fought back slowly but surely, coming back and winning in 45 minutes. It took them a long time, but they were down a ton of gold. They were down like 10k gold at like 20 minutes, and they fought back, came back for the win, and did it. So I think, honestly, I have to give most impressive to those guys. So let's get into our last topic here. Hurry up, wrap this thing up. Out of conference continues this week. Obviously, we have a few more weeks to go, tons of teams. Which division do you believe has the better teams overall? And which or which team do you think is going to come out on top? We already kind of covered the better teams overall, so we'll nix that. But which do you think is going to win? Who's going to have more victories this week, the Baron or the Elder? Uh, we'll go with Mr. Big Play. Uh, same with my uh, earlier answer. I do think there's a lot more better teams than uh, Baron, so there's more wins to be had. But I think uh, the top two teams in Elder will do their part helping out Elder Squad and getting four wins this week. But uh, I think the Baron will end up having more wins this week. Okay, excellent. Leslo. Mm, just to correct you, it would actually be five because AOL plays three games this week. Um, but I really don't – I can't say, like, which team I think is going to be the best – Without me, a hey, well, hands down. But with me, dude, I'm washed up garbage, yo. Like, everyone knows I'm only a one-trick Kaiser. So if, if my Kaiser gets banned out, what am I going to play? So, uh, I don't know. I feel like um, AOL with me are going to just start getting stomped. So I don't know if AOL is going to have what it takes. But if, you know, we had to go before this week, I think AOL is the much better team. Um, but Baron just has um, more teams that are, evenly matched that's what i'll say i'm not saying that they are better teams than the top of group a or that they might just be more evenly matched okay okay thank that's coming from the frosty carry uh now phoenix thoughts um i think that personally baron will come out on top but i'm gonna take a quote from my my good old jungler gimpy Anyone can be anybody in a best of one series. So um, it's hard to exactly tell 
who will beat who because upsets can happen and upsets should happen almost at least once a week. Like, oh, hey, this 5-0 and team going to lose uh, to an 0-3 team or something. Um, I just think, I think theoretically, Baron has the better skill floor, like I said before. So just going based off of uh, pure skill and talent and knowledge of the game, I'd have to say Baron would take more wins. Okay. Um, Rakan, please. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to go with the same. I think that overall, Elder Dragons just kind of a shit stomp group where AOL can just run free in the group. But as soon as cross group play hit, the first team they played was Naughty Nips. And while Naughty Nips didn't play in any manner of the team's name. I don't think that AOL played anywhere near the level that they are now to be quote unquote expected of because people have this high expectation of them when they're really like a middle of the pack kind of team where someone like Naughty Nips should have been able to take them down pretty much easily or, you know, somebody like Conquer or even Frosty Esports could take them down if they play at the highest peak they possibly can. I'm not bashing on AOL. I'm not saying they are by any means the worst team in the league. In fact, I think they're one of the best. They're probably top three in top of the group for sure. Wouldn't say they're number one overall. They definitely smashed Elder Dragon group, but I think Baron overall is going to come out on top, and I would put Conquer and Naughty Nips at the top of the group at the end of it. Okay. Baslo. Um, I think Baron will come out ahead um, right now. Baron, I feel like, just has, like, the stronger um, overall better play in the general sense of what to do in the game. Um, I do think, though, that, ooh, as we're already looking, I think AOL has a chance to become the one uh, to come out on top, as right now they did already beat Naughty Nips, and they might have be able to beat uh, Conquer. I think it'll be, um, that game will be fun and close, uh, it will be a fun game to watch and will be close. So we will see how that goes, and I believe that'll be the determining factor for us. But I do believe um, that Conqueror has the ability and um, stuff to beat them and be the one to come out on top. Okay. Yeah, so that's week six, Conqueror AOL. I am ex- looking forward to it. Um, as far as week five goes, just kind of looking at the schedule, looking at the teams, doing some quick maths here. Honestly, I think it's going to be another close week, honestly. Uh, I thought last weekend Elder would win more than the Baron. But then Roasted Black Peppa kind of threw off the stats a little bit. And then Eskimos with their FF. But either way, um, looking at this game, <clears throat> sorry, sorry, this week, a um, lot of close games, I think, honestly. Nine Ips versus Lobster. I think that's going to be a pretty uh, interesting game to watch, probably. I think, I think Nine Ips should be the better team. Uh, but I do think that... Um, going to be a pretty close one. And then another close one, I think, is Nine Nips versus OC Nation. Um, they're both second in their division. Um, again, I, it's very hard to say. Uh, I think Nine Nips picked up a new ADC. Um, they also have what, Gertzen or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that should really help out the bot lane a lot. And if that's the case, I think that'll really make it a super close game as opposed to the AOL game. So both those games looking really close. I still want to give it to Baron, just kind of looking at the schedule, looking at how the teams line up. But definitely, I think Nine Nips is kind of the team to look at this week because if they can beat Lobster but lose to OC, then well, that kind of shows you maybe Baron's not as strong as we thought. But if they win both, well, then okay, Baron is the stronger division. You know, looks pretty solid choice. Um, those are definitely going to be my two games to watch. Um, AOL play three times this week. Um, the AOL Frosty game might be okay. Just kind of give some good highlights to Frosty's new lineup. But I think it should be pretty handily to AOL. Um, so I think that's all the time we have for today. Uh, again, I've been your host, Dota. This has been my panel of experts. Hope you enjoy the video. Please uh, like, subscribe to our YouTube channel that you're watching this on right now. We stream on Twitch every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Thursday and Friday starting at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Saturday, Sunday starting at 2 p.m. Come check us out. We're going to have some super hot, spicy games this week. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.